Okay, so in this video, we're gonna be working on another text design. Let me show you what it looks like and then we'll get into it. So this is what the design we're gonna be making. We're gonna be using some instancing to add all these spheres. I mean, sorry, cubes, kind of the opposite of a sphere. And we're gonna make on this really quick floor plane. Side note, if you make this design, I would love to see it. Send it to me on Instagram. I'll put it on my story and I'd love to see your work. I love talking to you guys. So yeah, feel free to send it to me. All right, so let's get into the design. All right, so first, Shift A, and we're gonna add a plane. I'm gonna hit S, 8, and we're gonna scale it all the way up. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add a text. So come over here, Shift A, right here, right down here on uh, text. And let's go over to the alignment tools real quick. So already over here, right here on left, right here where it says alignment under paragraph, we're gonna hit center, and center on both of these horizontal and vertical. Now click on your text, hit R, X, 90. All right, I'm gonna hide our plane for now so we can work on the text. Hit tab, I'm gonna give it a capital A. And then I'm just gonna put our plane back in. Now I'm just gonna bring it right up here to the edge and we'll begin working on this. So now we have the A, we're not gonna change anything on the geometry. So I'm gonna go to our operator search here and type in convert convert to and mesh. So now if we hit tab, now we have some vertices going on here. So we need to remesh this first because to do the instancing on the cubes, it won't work with this particular topology. So we'll do a really quick fix. We're gonna go add a modifier. First, we're gonna add our solidify. So make it about as thick as you want. I'm gonna bring it about to there. First, I'm gonna go over here and add a mat cap so we can see what's going on. So we have our A. Put it about as thick as that. Next, we're gonna add a remesh modifier. Right down here, click remove disconnected vertices. We're not gonna worry about that. So let's just see how it's gonna work. Right here on octree depth, just bring it up until it goes back to the way we want it. So it's right about there. Now let's apply our two modifiers and hit tab. So right now, it's not as high poly as I want it to be. So I'm gonna hit control Z until we get our two modifiers back. And on octree depth, I'm gonna bring it up to five. And I'm gonna click apply on those two. So that's how I kind of want it to look. So this is about as many vertices I want. And the reason why that's important is because every box is gonna be assigned to a particular vertice. And the more vertices, the more boxes, the, the uh, you know, the way your design's gonna look. All right, next thing we're gonna do, just add a box. So mesh, cube, I keep calling it a box. Cube, box, same thing. All right, now I'm just gonna scale up my A a little bit, bring it to the edge of our plane. Okay, so so click your A over here on your object settings, right here in this box, go to instancing and change it to verts. Okay, so now we click the box and then the A, that order is very important, and then click Control P and click object. So now you can see over here what's going on. It's basically put the box in the shape of the A, but it's too big, so click on your cube hit S and just scale it down till you can kind of see what's going on. And then we'll just put it right up here. So move the A out of the way, out of the way where your camera's gonna be, click the cube and then bring it back over here. And then we'll put it right where it needs to be on our plane, right about there. So now you can click your cube, kind of scale it back to where it kind of looks how you want it to be, just like that. You can also do this in the particle settings, but I, I like the way it works better with instancing, but you can do that either either way. All right, next thing we need to do is add our camera. So hit Shift A, add your camera, and then right up here where you see the little camera icon, we're gonna change, sorry. So right up here where you see the little printer icon, we're gonna change our dimensions to 2000 by 2000. And then hit Control, Alt, Zero, snap it to view. Click your camera, go to the camera settings right over here, and we're gonna change it to orthographic. All right, now we have an orthographic view. I'm gonna sort of adjust our view real quick. And then orthographic scale, you can just kind of zoom it in and move how you want it to look. All right, next we need to add lighting and then the floor plan, as you can see on the design, we have these sort of swirls going on. So we're gonna make that real quick. All right, so in 2.8, you should have the shading preset. So we're gonna go over to that shading preset real quick. I'm gonna hit Z and look dev, and then I'm gonna take off bloom so it doesn't overtake the scene. And I'm gonna change our HDRI. All right, so in the shader editor, 
click new and we have this right here. All right, so first let's add a color ramp right here, plug it right into the base color and then add a Voronoi texture, plug that into the factor and then we're gonna add a moose grave. Plug the color into the vector. So now you can see we have all those swirls going on. So to eliminate the amount of swirls, we can take on our color ramp and just sort of bring it down kind of like that. So you can see that's how it's kind of happening right back here. And then if you're not happy with the size, you can just mess with the scale here and the scale here and change the way that looks. Next thing we need to do is add a bump node right here, plug the normal into the normal, and then on the Voronoi texture, plug the color into the height. So now we have some bump mapping going on, kind of gives it a little bit of terrain. I'm gonna adjust our color ramp here just so that we can get less bump going on. Kind of like that. And then with the white, we're gonna make it orange, just like that. And we're good for now. Let's go in and add our lighting. So first, I'm gonna change it to the Cycles engine. This looks better for this particular design. So first, we're gonna add an area lamp. Shift A, go to lights and add area. And we're gonna put one. We're gonna put one directly above. Make sure it's out of the view of the camera and then scale it up. And then let's see how it looks. Looks good for now. We're gonna add one more light. Another area lamp. We're gonna bring it up. Bring it this way, slightly to the front. And if you hit R twice, you can sort of move it out and you can see where it points. So I'm gonna bring it a little bit further this way. Put it right at the beginning and scale it up a little bit. Hit Z and we're gonna check the rendered view. So that looks pretty good. Let's add a color to our A. So add a new color, bring it about orange, kind of the same orange we have going on. So if you try to add a color by clicking the A, that's not going to work you need to click on the cube and then we're going to add that color we just made and the cube is what dictates the color that's going on here all right this all looks pretty good we just need to up the strength of the lights so the one above give it a strength of 1000 and the one on the side i'd say give it a strength of 300 and we'll see how that looks there we go so that's pretty much the design here's the render settings real quick if you're in cycles, sampling, I'd give it about 300 samples. And then in your denoising, I would add denoising and just keep it at the default settings. Those are really good for this particular design because there's a good bit of light in the design. So there's not really going to be that much noise. So 300 samples is going to do just fine. So there you go. That's an interesting text design. You can play with that. A little interesting instancing trick. And yeah, thanks for watching.